Today I've got an episode that's going to keep you on the edge of your seat. First, we're heading into the remote woods of northern Michigan, where a seasoned hunter comes face to face with something that defies explanation. Then, we'll make our way to the rugged trails of the Appalachians, where a truck driver's peaceful hike takes a terrifying turn. Finally, we'll wrap up deep in the heart of Huron National Forest, where an encounter so chilling has kept a hunter away from his favorite spot ever since. Trust me, you're not going to want to miss these stories. It was late September, one of those crisp early autumn days where the air feels sharp and the trees start to change color. I was just 10 miles outside of the Huron National Forest in Michigan, where I usually went hunting every year. I've been going up there since I was a kid, first with my dad, and now mostly alone. It's not a popular spot, which is why I like it. I can spend hours out there without seeing a soul. That day, I was hunting deer. I'd gotten a late start because I was in no rush, so by the time I set out into the woods, it was already mid-afternoon. I'd parked my truck at the edge of an old logging road and hiked a couple of miles in, just enough to get away from any noise or people. The sky was cloudy, with the kind of heavy gray that made it seem like rain was always just around the corner, though it never actually came. I found a decent spot near a ridge overlooking a valley and settled in behind some brush. I had a good line of sight for about 200 yards. Everything was quiet, just the usual sounds of birds and the wind through the trees. The woods up there are thick, mostly pine and some birch mixed in, and it gets dark early, especially with the cloud cover. I sat there for a couple of hours, waiting, watching. I was just about to pack up, figuring I'd head back to the truck before it got too dark, when I saw something move in the distance. At first, I thought it was a deer, so I raised my rifle and looked through the scope, trying to get a better look. That's when I realized it wasn't a deer. It was tall. I mean really tall. It was standing upright, but its posture was hunched, like it was trying to move low to the ground but still couldn't help being huge. The thing was covered in thick dark brown fur, kind of like a bear, but it wasn't shaped like one. Its limbs were too long, especially its arms, which hung down past its knees. I dared not move, just staring through my scope. I'd heard the stories before, people talking about Bigfoot or Sasquatch, but I never gave those stories a second thought, just like ghost and monster stories. But this thing moved slowly, making its way through the trees about 100 yards from where I was sitting. I could see the way its head turned, like it was scanning the area. I was downwind, so I don't think it could smell me, but it seemed like it was listening for something. It was quiet, too quiet for something that big. At that moment, a weird mix of emotions hit me. Part of me was terrified, I mean, this thing was massive, and I was out here all alone with just a rifle that suddenly felt like it wasn't nearly enough. But another part of me was fascinated, like I was seeing something I wasn't supposed to see, something out of a different world. I didn't even think to take a picture or video with my phone. I was just stuck, watching. It kept moving, slow and deliberate, and I was debating whether I should stay hidden or try to make a break for it. But then, it stopped. It stood there, just about 70 yards away now, and turned its head in my direction. I could feel my heart start to pound, and I held my breath, hoping it hadn't spotted me. For a few seconds, it just stared. I couldn't make out its face clearly. There was too much distance, but I could see the outline of its head, and there was something about its eyes, even from that far away. Then, without making a sound, it turned and started walking away deeper into the trees. I watched until it disappeared from view, still half expecting it to come back or charge at me or something, but it never did. I stayed there for a while, probably longer than I should have, just trying to process what I'd seen. Eventually I stood up, my legs shaky, and started making my way back. I kept glancing over my shoulder the whole time, convinced that thing was following me. But the woods were quiet again, like nothing had ever happened. By the time I made it back to the truck, the sun had set, and it was getting dark fast. I loaded my gear as quickly as I could and got the hell out of there. On the drive back to town, I kept replaying the whole thing in my head. I've been in those mountains dozens of times, and I've never seen anything like that before, 
And let me tell you too, I haven't been back since. I didn't tell anyone for a long time. It was too hard to put into words. A giant hairy creature in the middle of the woods. That just seemed too strange, too crazy. I thought about reporting it, maybe telling one of those Bigfoot researchers or something. But I didn't want to deal with the attention or having it get back to people I know. But every once in a while, mostly when I'm out for a walk, I'll think about it. How it looked at me, how it moved, and the way the air felt different when it was near. And I wonder if someone else will ever stumble across it. I've had some close calls hunting before. Bears, cougars, stuff like that. But nothing ever shook me like that day. Whatever it was, it wasn't something I was supposed to see. I'm totally sure of that. And that's fine if it stays away because I'm not sure I want to see it again. Once has been more than enough. It was one of those days where the air smells like damp leaves and wood smoke. Kevin, a truck driver by trade, had been on the road for most of the week, so he decided to spend his day off in the mountains near his hometown, a small place nestled on the outskirts of the Appalachians. He knew there were good hiking trails in the area, and figured a quiet day alone in the woods would do him some good. He parked his truck at the trailhead around 2 p.m. and started walking. The trail wasn't well marked, but he had downloaded a map on his phone just in case. He walked for about an hour, the trail winding upward, getting steeper. At some point, he realized he hadn't seen another person since he left the truck. Not that it was unusual. It was a weekday, and the trail wasn't exactly popular. But still, he noticed it. As he climbed, the trees thinned out a bit, giving way to rocky outcroppings and patches of thick brush. He could see more of the sky now, the clouds rolling in. He checked his phone for the time. No service. He hadn't noticed when the signal dropped, but that wasn't surprising out here. He wasn't planning on being out much longer anyway. Just a quick hike to clear his head. He had just about decided to turn back when he heard something. At first, he thought it was the wind, but then he realized it was coming from somewhere ahead of him, deeper in the woods. He stopped, straining to hear, but the sound faded. But then the sound came again, this time louder. Whatever it was, it wasn't a deer. He was sure of that. The steps were heavy, deliberate, like something large moving through the brush. He considered heading back down the trail, but wanted to know what was going on. He edged off the path, moving toward the noise, careful not to make too much sound. As he pushed through a thicket of brambles, he caught sight of something through the trees, a dark figure moving slowly up the hill. At first, he thought it might be a bear, but it was walking upright, almost human-like, but its arms hung low. Kevin's mouth went dry as he confirmed that it wasn't a bear, and it definitely wasn't human. He crouched down, trying to get a better look without drawing attention to himself. The thing kept moving slowly, as if it was searching for something. It's broad back to him. Its fur, or maybe it was hair, was dark, matted in some places. It must have stood at least seven feet tall, with a bulky frame that seemed too big for the narrow trees it was moving through. Could it be Bigfoot? He'd heard stories growing up, but he'd never put much stock in them. People around here loved their folklore. Bigfoot, the Mothman, all that stuff. But he'd never believed it. Not really. Now, though, seeing this thing in front of him, he wasn't so sure. He was watching it when suddenly it stopped. It turned its head slightly like it had heard something. Kevin's stomach dropped. It was facing away from him, but he had the overwhelming sense that it knew he was there, like maybe it had smelled him or something. For a few agonizing seconds, nothing happened. Then, with an eerie silence, the creature straightened up and began walking again, this time away from him, moving deeper into the forest. Kevin stayed crouched, not daring to move until he was sure it was gone. When the sound of its footsteps finally faded into the distance, he let out a shaky breath. He stood up slowly, his legs stiff from crouching. He forced himself to take a few deep breaths. He had no idea what he had just seen, but he knew one thing. He wasn't sticking around to find out more. Kevin turned back toward the trail, moving as quickly and quietly as he could, without breaking into a full sprint. 
The shadows were getting longer now, and the temperature had dropped noticeably. By the time he reached the trailhead and saw his truck, he was practically running. He jumped in, locked the doors, and sat there for a minute, his hands gripping the steering wheel, trying to calm down. His brain was still buzzing. He wanted to believe that it was something explainable, but deep down he knew that it might not be. He drove home in silence, the events of the afternoon replaying over and over in his mind. A few days later, he told his buddy Dave about it over a couple of beers. Dave listened, didn't say much, just nodded. When Kevin finished, Dave just shrugged and said, You never know, man. People say there's all kinds of stuff out there. And to be honest, I think that's happened to me too. Meaning, I think we encountered the same thing. Kevin felt relief beyond belief knowing that he wasn't the only one but it didn't make him feel any safer. Either way, he knew what he had seen, and that was enough to keep him on edge and take extra precautions. Just knowing that something like this could exist was enough to have him looking over his shoulder any time he was alone at night. It didn't matter where he was. To this day, he is still trying to get past the fear of being alone. Anyone have any ideas to help him? It happened in late October in northern Michigan, just as the fall chill really started to settle in. The leaves were mostly off the trees by then, leaving the woods looking a bit skeletal, with bare branches clawing at the sky. Tom had gone out hunting like he usually did that time of year. He was an avid deer hunter, and the small game season was well underway. It was a Saturday morning, a little after dawn, when he headed into the woods near his buddy Steve's property. Steve owned a big stretch of land that bordered a state forest, and the two of them hunted there every year without fail. The morning started off pretty much the way it always did. It was cold enough that Tom could see his breath, and the ground was damp with a thin layer of frost. The sun had just begun to rise, casting a weak light through the trees, but there was still that early morning mist hanging low, the kind that makes everything look a little hazy. Tom liked mornings like this, quiet, peaceful, and still. He set up in his usual spot, an old deer blind he and Steve had built a few years back. It wasn't much, just a simple structure made from scrap wood, but it did the job. From there, he had a good view of a small clearing where deer often wandered through, and he settled in, rifle in hand, waiting for movement. For the first couple of hours, everything was as expected, quiet, calm, the occasional sounds from some small animal scurrying by. He didn't see any deer, but that wasn't unusual. Hunting was more about patience than anything else. Tom was used to sitting out there for hours at a time without seeing much. But then, around mid-morning, something changed. It started with a sound, a low, deep noise that Tom couldn't quite place. It was almost like a growl, but not exactly. The woods were full of strange noises if you paid close enough attention. But after a few minutes, it came again, this time louder, closer, and it made the hair on the back of his neck stand up. He looked around trying to figure out where it was coming from, but everything looked the same. The mist had started to lift, but there were still patches of it hanging between the trees, making visibility a bit tricky. Then he caught movement to the west. Standing at the edge of the clearing, partially obscured by the trees and fog, was a figure. It was tall, at least seven or eight feet, and dark brown in color. Darker than a deer would be this time of year. The first thought that crossed Tom's mind was that it was a bear, but something about that didn't match up either. It was standing on two legs, not hunched over like a bear might when it rears up. And its eyes, they were glowing not the way an animal's eyes reflect light in the dark, but actually glowing, with a faint red hue. Tom had been hunting for years, had seen all kinds of wildlife, but nothing like this. Whatever it was, it wasn't an animal he could name. It didn't move normally either. It stood there staring at him, and then it let out that same noise again, a sound that seemed to vibrate in Tom's chest. Without thinking, Tom raised his rifle. He wasn't sure why, Maybe instinct, maybe fear, but his hands were shaking so badly that he didn't even feel steady enough to take a shot. The creature didn't move, didn't flinch. 
It just stood there watching him. The standoff seemed to last forever, though it was probably only 30 seconds or so. And then it turned its head to the sky, let out a bellowing call, and walked back into the trees. Tom sat there stunned, rifle still raised. He listened for more sounds, footsteps, anything. But the woods had gone completely silent. Tom stayed in the blind for another hour, too rattled to move. He wasn't sure what he'd seen, but he knew it wasn't normal. Eventually, he packed up his things and made his way back to Steve's place, constantly glancing over his shoulder the whole walk back. Every crack of a branch or rustle of leaves made him jump. He didn't tell Steve right away what had happened, partly because he wasn't sure he could explain it, and partly because he didn't want to sound ridiculous. Later that night, when they were sitting around the fire with a couple of beers, he finally told him. Steve laughed at first, but when Tom insisted, telling him about the sound, the size of the thing, the way it had looked at him, Steve's expression changed. You know, Steve said, leaning back in his chair, my grandpa used to tell stories about something like that. Said he saw something big out in these woods once. Always thought he was just messing with us, trying to scare the kids. He paused for a moment, staring into the fire. Maybe he wasn't. Tom didn't know what to make of it. He still didn't. It wasn't something he could easily forget, though. Every time he went back out into those woods after that day, he felt uneasy, like something was watching him. He never saw the creature again. But every now and then, in the early morning or late afternoon when the woods got especially quiet, he'd hear that low growl in the distance, just faint enough to make him wonder if it was real. Whatever it was, Tom didn't have an explanation. He wasn't sure if he wanted one. All he knew was that something was out there, something that didn't belong, and he wasn't eager to run into it again. 